How long could it last? How long could the Toronto real estate market boom last? This is Yossi Kaplan, Toronto real estate agent mortgage broker. And today I'm going to talk to you about how long could this crazy market uh, last? Okay, so when I came here to Canada, that was mid 90s. Everything was gray. There was nothing going on. There was no condos. It was cheap. Stores were closed on Sunday. You couldn't even go. There's no beer store or LCB open on Sunday. Bars closed at midnight or one. It was a dead town. Okay, look at now fast forward 20 years uh, forward even more and look at Toronto now. Everything is open all the time. Prices are crazy. So many people got the craziest traffic in North America, maybe in the world. I don't know what's going on. How did it happen? And, you know, in, in, in the relative scheme of things, 20 years or 30 years is a short, short amount of time. Yossi Kaplan here, Toronto Realtor Mortgage Broker. If you are looking to buy, sell, invest in real estate or you need a mortgage or just advice, give me a shout, I will help you. I get a lot of people call me. Even after they bought, asked me if it was a good deal. I got an email from someone uh, this week. Hey, I bought in uh, such buildings, is it a good deal? I, my response was, well, you know, if you want, send me the unit uh, particulars and I'll take a look for you. I never heard back. So I don't know if the guy changed his mind or went for it, but I will look for it, it's not a problem. So, you know, when you look at the economy and you look at the global economy, you realize things are very, very funky right now. I mean, we're printing all this money, lots and lots of money. Uh, the stock market's doing good all the time. Prices of real estate is doing great all the time. Now, we've had a crazy run 2015, 16, 17 in Canada and in the Western world where prices went up so fast, something like 25% a year, three years in a row that they have, they have to calm down a bit. You know, it's just too fast. Even our economy which is completely fake, by the way. All economies are fake, right? It's like, and when I, may, when I mean fake, I mean it's man-made and decided. Like a bunch of people sit in the room, basically decide how it's going to work and then make it run. When the feds want to print money, they print money. Nobody's asking them. You know, they can do whatever they want. And uh, everyone has to follow. So what, what you see now is really following on, on all kind of global macroeconomic things that are happening. So let's break it down. Okay, so a condo come for sale in Toronto. You know, when I started buying them, they're $200 a foot. Now they're $1,000 a foot, $2,000 a foot. So they're five to 10 times more than they were 20 years ago. Um, is everything else went up the price five or 20 times more? Uh, no. Condos definitely appreciate a lot, houses too. Um, the price of food's increasing constantly. The price of everything is increasing constantly. So the value of your money is eroding, okay? If you, because the only thing that is not increasing as fast as the price of real estate or other, other stuff is of course the, the amount of money you make. So every day you're essentially making less. You're working the same, but you're, more, but you're making less. Even if they give you a bonus on the salary, even if, if your salary goes up, you're still making less because you can buy less with that money. So <laughs> visually it looks like, oh yes, I made $10,000 more this year. No, you didn't. You probably made less because that $10,000 more is not enough to buy you what 10000 last year was and so on, you know? So most uh, salary increases, uh, they're like two, three, four percent, five if you're lucky. Half of this is eaten by taxes and all kinds of stuff. So you're really getting like one, two or three percent increase to your salary. If you're making uh, $100,000, that's, you know, one to $5,000, big deal. Everything's increased a lot more than that, right? If you, need, if you needed the pass to buy, uh, you know, so many month salaries to buy a condo, it's a lot, many more month salaries now. But that's a good idea to explain to you that the value of, of the money you're making is eroding. That's why people invest. That's why people invest in real estate or other things. They buy stocks, gold, bonds, properties, uh, hoping that the price of those will go up faster than the price of the money if they just kept those dollars in their pockets. Uh, usually it works, that's why people do it. If it didn't work, people do something else. You know, this, the, the greater the, the crowd smarts here always wins at the end because you know, all the people together, what, what they believe, that's what's going to happen. So if we all believe that the price of uh, money is eroding, it, it does, okay? Um, it's, it's a bit of a different way to look at it, but it's the right psychological way to look at it and to see how things are moving and changing. So, you know, any, any of these buildings, I'm looking at now, this guy passed through. Any, any of these buildings I'm looking at now, you know, was, was worth doing the, the VIP less, right? So everyone's buying the VIP. Uh, go to torontocondos.sell.com. I got all the VIPs now sorted. You can look at all the new condos coming up. You can register right there, torontocondosforsale.com. I'll put the link below. 
And you can see condos you're buying today, you know, they're going to be more expensive in the second round. You know how it is. Uh, you come into the VIP and you pick up a condo, say it's at 900 bucks a foot. And the second round is 920 a foot. And the third round is 950 a foot. And when you go to the market, it's 1,000 a foot or 1,100 a foot. So you essentially made, say, 20% of your investment. So if you spend, say, $600,000, your 20% is $120,000. Uh, but don't forget, you only invested 15 or 20% of that, right? That's your deposit. So let, let's say on that $600,000 condo, let's say you put uh, 15%, 90000 and then you flip it to someone else, and you made 100000 profit. You sold it for 700 So you got your 90 back plus 100 That's more than doubling your money, and it probably took you two or three years. So that's pretty good, okay? That's pretty good, and there's really no other way that you can do it and that's why people are buying condos uh, condos are becoming like a coin you know people uh, a couple years ago people were buying bitcoin and bitcoin was crazy 2017 and this it was crazy and then everything calmed down a bit which is i think is really good because it went up too fast and there needs to be some equilibrium some balance now there's not going to be balance for everyone there's always going to be people that are going to make more and people are going to make less uh, that's because of circumstances because of the ability of them to get up the cash because of the ability of them to understand what the investment is the market you know not everyone's born equal um, but you can and um, what you can do is you can always invest if you invest by yourself invest with a friend invest with family friend where i come from the part of the world very very common that people get together say uh, there's a young couple getting married the family will get together and help them buy uh, an apartment or a house or help them with whatever they need now that that may be less common in the west but because there's such an inf influx of people coming into canada from all over the world you see this more and more people getting together because they're coming from cultures which are more tribal which are more social which uh, the group helps the individual so that that's kind of cool at the same time if you're not if you don't have the family or the the cultural uh, background to help you with the purchase you got to make it yourself which you can Okay, so how, how long did this, this is a long introduction, but how, how long would this all can go? Well, if you look at the value of money today, like it was uh, 100 years ago, and I've, I've shown it in many, many charts uh, over my videos, and that's a walking video, so no charts here, but uh, you can look up dollar value and see that you're looking about dollar um, less than 100 years ago was worth uh, about 100 times more than the dollar of today. The dollar of today is worth only one or two cents what it was worth when it was introduced uh, in the early 1900s and that that when we start counting okay so think about it if you had a hundred dollars sorry if you had one dollar in uh, say 1913 or whatever it's only like one or two cents today if you kept it under the mattress you kept it all these years but you invested that one dollar it probably worth a lot a lot a lot a lot a lot okay so even if you just caught up to inflation you know, that means that one dollar then, uh, say, one dollar then, a hundred years ago, maybe bought you, I don't know, a buggy, <laughs> a horse cart, whatever. Um, so maybe it's good enough to buy a vehicle today. You know, that means it, it kept its value in a in kind of way. But if you kept it under the mattress, you kept it in your pocket, it will not happen. So you have to invest it in things that grow because the value of your dollar diminishes but some things we as people as society we, we look at and we say that's worth a lot so those those real estates they're really good you know you can invest in all kinds of stuff but you know the stock it's it's not real it's just a piece of paper and so, same with all the financial instruments that they're called or financial products but they're not real they're just they're just made up okay it's like a whole made up stuff um but brick and mortar you know you can touch it it's here it's real and that's why i like it so much look at this thing it's beautiful, okay? That's a nice old brick, the Toronto brick works, you know, it used to be a, a brick factory <laughs> up on the hill there. So there you go. So in our beautiful city, you know, there's so many opportunities for you and me and everyone else to invest and do really well. And it's really, you know, the sky's the limit. You want a Maserati? There it is, right here. There's a Maserati in a fancy Porsche, Range Rover. I don't care for these so much. I like the bicycle. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much. They're really nice, um, but I'll take a condo. Why? Because the car, the value just just goes down all the time, and it breaks, and at the end it doesn't work. But a condo, you know, anyone, you can, you can live in there, you can rent it out, you can make money off it, you can flip it, you can sell it. So the value of certain goods will always be up and always catch to what it is, because otherwise we'll have nothing else left, and 
we need some instruments to retain value, to store value. So real estate is one of the best ones. Uh, traditionally, gold is a good one. Some stocks, what's called the blue chips. But you know, our focus here is real estate. So when you buy real estate, you you're preserving value and that's why you see so much money coming to Canada from other countries and that's why you see even Canadians um, born and raised here not necessarily Anglo-Sax but all cultures all races uh, they all understand everyone understands that that's the game and wherever you go in town it's to talk about the real estate now there's some people who are like you know will kick and scream all the way to the grave da -da -da. that's okay that's totally fine that's their opinion they can do whatever they want with it I don't know where they live um, but you're going to see there's going to be two classes coming. I talked about before, there's a class of the landlords or the class of the owners. At least you own one, you live it in yourself. Or some people even buy an investment property, rent it out and, and rent somewhere cheaper. And that's totally fine. That's a good idea, actually. If, if that's what you got to do, that's totally good. Um, but there's another class and there's a class of renters. And they basically will never own. And... <laughs> You know, Canada has one of the highest ownership uh, ratio in, we in, uh, in the Western world, but still, you know, probably about half in Toronto, probably 80% or 90% actually rent. Uh, well, maybe half. I, I can't really tell that because I don't know how many of these condos are rent rentals and how not. But you can assume that a lot of the new ones, the small ones are renters, rentals, and the larger ones and the fancy ones could be more owner-occupied. Okay, because someone who has the money to... Uh, buy a house or, or a nice condo, probably live it in themselves. And then if they have extra money, they're gonna buy a small unit and rent it out. That's kind of how the order of things go usually. Um, mind you, I did a video about one or two bedrooms and you know, two bedroom is a great investment these days, I think because how things are. Um, but there will be two classes and there are two classes, those who own and those who rent. Those who live in their own units that they, they, they own and those who rent from them. Okay, so the one person uh, made up uh, the decision, came up with the deposit, got the mortgage, got the condo, pre-construction, assignment, resale, doesn't matter. Lots of, uh, lots of options in any category. And they live in it, and they live in it. And uh, every month, the first of the month, they get the mortgage, they pay for their own pocket. Uh, and they, they enjoy the appreciation when they sell or when they refinance. And, and the other, but you know, the neighbor, the person that rents from someone else, they are paying someone else's mortgage, they are paying someone else's condo fees, they are paying someone else's taxes, and that person is enjoying the property value increasing while someone else is paying for all of that. So imagine after 10 or 15 years, maybe after 15 years, property paid for, you know, just increase your payments by a little bit and pay your property quicker, pay less uh, interest, and before you know it, someone else paid for property for you. And if you did it three times, you have three property paid for. If you did it 10 times, you have 10 properties paid for if you did a hundred times you have a hundred condos paid for <laughs> so if your average condo is half a million a hundred condos uh, that's uh, 50 million dollars okay that's 50 million dollars that that's a portfolio of a hundred condos worth it, worth uh, 500 each half a million each very nice okay so all these things are possible they're not that complicated I'll help you I'll show you how to do it yossikaplan.com urbanrealtytron.com torontocondosforsale.com um, hit me up with any question a lot of people are not sure how to invest or some have an idea, either good. I'll discuss with you the best option for you and do my best to find you the best uh, investment opportunity I can find for you. And hopefully we can have a great relationship. Um, be nice to each other, support each other and prosper together. Good luck. That's it.